PC エンジン512色スーパービジュアル6チャンネルリアルサウンドニューワールドを制覇する PC エンジン全開 NEC から Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Mess. So, Terra Connecting Series, the PC Engine Playhouse, where I take a look at some of my favorite PC Engine games of all time on the Hue Card side as well as the CD ROM side. And today we're playing Daytona Twin B, which is not only an absolutely spectacular vertical queued em up, it's also the first PC Engine game I ever purchased. When I grabbed my Duo R as well as one game to test on it like 19 years ago, I picked this one because I had played it before and it was relatively cheap. That's definitely not the case anymore, but it's still worth the price it commands because I think this is one of my favorite shmups on the system. Before you get to find Valda, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like and subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Pun very much intended in this game. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. But you'll see there, I just took my first death, and that is because this game teases you constantly. You have to shoot the bells until they turn a different color to get power-ups. And the game will trick you into focusing on the bells while enemies are coming towards you. It's got a huge risk versus reward mechanic to it. You need those bells to power up your ship, but trying to actually continually hit them until they change colors while you have all the enemies on screen at once can be a very challenging thing to do and if you hit them one too many times they go back to gold it's good for points but nothing for power ups but i absolutely love the twin b series and this is the fifth game in the actual series itself and i do own this on sega saturn as well on the twin b deluxe pack but honestly playing on pc engine is my preferred way to play because this is the first game i ever sat down and played on pc engine from start to finish definitely some nostalgia factor in here but this is always considered one one of the better shmups on the PC Engine. And you add in Konami's sense of humor, their colors, and their overall ability to make awesome games, and this one just stands head and toe above a lot of the other games that I own in my collection. And just look at the size of this boss sprite. Sure, the screen has to go black in the background because it is drawing a lot, but even with that, this is just such a fun first boss, this gigantic mechanical crab here, shooting out bubbles and bullets at the same time. And this is a very visually stunning game, and I love these little vignettes you get after beating the level. Seems like the Mad Texan from The Simpsons right there, except in Twin B form. And this game, from the time that you start to the time that you see the credits roll, is always amazing to look at, always fun to play, and has that I think is maybe the best soundtrack on any hue card for the PC Engine outside of Bomberman 94. That is why I love this game so much. It is such a joy to play, and whichever Twin B you start with, you're always going to have that same sense of fun and satisfaction. I know we already did Proteus Da, but doing Twin B seems like the other side of the same coin. Very different game, but still has that fun and charm to it without all the ridiculousness in here. Now you'll see I was able to actually get some of those power-up bells. I have a shield, a quad shot, different little ships following me around. Getting powered up in this game, just like any shmup, is going to make the absolute difference. But again, I just love all of the enemies as well. We have flying squirrels, pink elephants, what look like high heel shoes coming in. This game definitely still has that sense of whimsy, wonder, and charm that Konami is so well known for, and I just can't get enough of this. I play it probably once a year, and if you're looking for a first game to 1cc shmup-wise on the PC Engine, this is definitely one that I would recommend. It's not super easy, but it's always super fair, and when you memorize the patterns, you're going to be having a lot of progression very quickly. And I just love, again, the boss battles in this game. You have this giant airship with these three muscly dudes coming out the back. Kind of looks a little bit like Cho and Niki here. It's got some of those vibes, but as you continue to destroy the ship, the mechanical nature finally comes out, and you'll see all of these different what look like bees coming down in air kayaks. It makes absolutely no sense, but it's always so much fun to see. And again, you get all of these little fun vignettes in between levels. It's a nice touch, and you can definitely tell the developers at Konami love this game. Now, this is definitely not the best version of the game. You have the arcade PCB, and you have the Sharp X68000 version, which is technically going to be better. But for nostalgia's sake, and this being my first PC Engine game, and still one of my favorite favorites. That's why I wanted to talk about it on this, and I may do an X68000 series in the future. Leave me a comment down below and tell me if you're interested in that. But I will also say this game has an amazing soundtrack because Konami soundtracks were second to none. So go ahead and listen for like 45 seconds and I'll come back and tell you more about the history of the game. But enjoy! <laughs>
Konami always made a great soundtrack, and Daytona Twin Bee is no different, and interestingly enough, one of the characters from the Twin Bee series, Pastel, shows up in Battle Trist on the 3DO M2, and I don't think you didn't realize, but I can tie the 3DO M2 to just about anything. But mechanically, the boss fights can be quite interesting as well, and this is a fun little pivot on the normal shmup formula. You have to shoot those fans on the left and the right, those fins coming off of the robot, to open up the weak spot. You can't actually do damage unless you get them to spin around, so it takes a lot of thought, a lot of maneuvering, and understanding the screen space to actually be able to do that. And I love that in a boss mechanic, having a little bit of a puzzle alongside just a general shmup gameplay feel as well. And every single level has such a unique vibe and unique flair. You're going to be seeing something new. You're going to be getting new enemy sprites. You're going to be getting all of these colorful backgrounds. And this just looks incredible. I know the PC Engine isn't up to the spec of Super Nintendo or Sega Genesis, but that doesn't matter because when somebody was developing a game for this platform that knew what they were doing, I think this could look every bit as good as early generation Super Nintendo or Genesis games. And this boss here, again, another puzzle pattern. Every time you do damage to him, he's going to charge up that electricity and there's going to be three blasts coming out of the bottom. You need to time it up so that you can either hit him in one end of the screen so he can't make his way back to the other end or you need to go underneath those lightning bolts and avoid them. That's the fun part about the bosses in these games. They all have really nice patterns and once you actually learn to identify them and understand what's going on, it just becomes that much easier and that much more fun. You get a great sense of satisfaction when you actually beat each boss. But this level right here is definitely my favorite. Konami always loved using pastel colorways in a lot of their games, arcade or otherwise. These kind of pink, rusty reds here, this blue waterfall, these green enemies, this is just where the PC Engine and this game shines. The colors that they put up on screen just go so well together and create such a vibe in the world building aspect that it just looks incredible. And even though these are just little different colors, the pseudo reflections in the water of the city above you just add so much character and depth to the visuals. Or if you see something underneath, you're going to see a bright shining what looks like city but might be geodes. I've never been quite sure. Tell me down below what you think they are. But again, this game is just so pretty to look at. You marry that with absolutely spectacular shmup mechanics and a great Konami soundtrack and you just have a 10 out of 10 hit in my opinion. The entire Twin B series is so good and I wish Konami actually still made video games that would give us some more of this because honestly it's been a long time since we've seen a game in the franchise and I don't think we're ever going to see one again which just bums me out. But even when the game's just having you wait to get to the next boss, there's so much fun in the background. And this boss here is just brutally difficult the first time you face him. You need to understand where you are in the screen space. You need to move around. And you think once you hit all the segments off, you're going to be totally done. But the reality is you'll see in just a moment what happens when you defeat this snake right here. It is going to reform on the screen as a completely different snake. And you're going to have to do this three times with progressive difficulty. The boss battles in this game can and will last a very long time but that's where a lot of the fun comes in you need to understand where you are you need to get better at the game because you're only going to get three credits unless you up them in the options menu and i definitely recommend just starting with the three if you go to five you can probably beat the game in one sitting even if you never played it before so give yourself that challenge play it at the original credits in the options and you should have an absolutely spectacular time but one more sample of the music i love this track in particular about 25 seconds this time and i'll come back show you the end of the game and tell you what's coming up next on pc engine playhouse It just sounds so good coming out of the PC Engine sound hardware because this is a hue card game, not a CD-ROM game, so you're dealing with the internal sound hardware and not having any sort of Redbook audio played back. But even this area right here, they save so many visual effects for later in the game. This is such a good parallax scrolling and it gives such a great sense of depth. Even though this is a 2D game comprised out of sprites and 2D background layers, you really do get the sensation that the floor is receding into the vanishing point in the middle of the screen and that if you didn't fly around, you would fall to your death from here. Now it's a little bit of a morbid thought, but that's just what I see when I see this, that incredible sense of depth. But Daytona Twin B is just a special game. It has absolutely everything I want in a shmup. 
great graphics, incredible music, a fun gameplay hook, and it also has that Konami charm, which is something that's really hard to describe. Their games just had such a feel to them. As we come up to this boss battle here, this castle looking area again just looks incredible. This is one of my favorite games on the PC Engine visually, whether you're on the Hue card or whether you're on the CD-ROM. I just cannot get enough, so for any reason you've never played this game before, definitely check it out. You can play it on Saturn, PlayStation 1, PC Engine, Sharp X68000, you can emulate the arcade original. But short of that, I'm going to die. We are done, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.